What's going on everyone? Welcome to Good Vibe Games. My name is Neil and today I'm going to teach you how to play Role Player, designed by Keith Moteca and published by Thunderworks Games. So let's dive right into it. To set up, all players first roll a die. The player with the highest roll is the start player and places all 73 dice into the bag. This game uses a standard D6 or six-sided dice. These 73 dice are broken down into seven different colors. 10 green, 10 blue, 10 red, 10 purple, 10 black, 10 white, and 13 gold. Beginning with the start player and proceeding clockwise around the table, each player chooses a character sheet and selects the male or female side. The character sheet is where a player's character evolves over the course of the game. On your character sheet, you'll find your race, with choices between Orc, Human, Dragonkin, Dwarf, Elf, and Halfling. What differentiates the races from one another is their bonuses to certain abilities which, when added or subtracted from your final three dice that make up your overall ability score, can help or hinder you. You'll also find spaces for your class card, backstory card, and alignment card, all of which will be explained shortly. Each player develops a character by placing dice in the 18 spaces that make up the six attribute rows. These define a character's physical, mental, and social prowess. Each attribute row consists of the following. The name of the attribute, as indicated by its three-letter title, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, the attribute spaces, the attribute actions, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Players can further enhance their characters with skills, traits, weapons, and armor cards. There are four areas around the outside of the character sheet for organizing these four types of market cards bought during the game. And lastly, you'll find a final scoring info area that shows the scoring conditions for the end of the game. After players select their character sheets, Take the gold and place it in reach of all the players. This will be the supply. In a two player game, each player then takes five gold from the supply. If you're playing three or four players, the third and fourth player receive six and seven gold respectively. Beginning with the start player and proceeding clockwise around the table, each player draws a random die from the bag, then takes the double sided class card matching that color and chooses one of the classes on the card. So if I were to draw this red die from the bag, I would find the class card matching the color of the die, and then it's up to me to choose between the two classes. In this case, either Warrior or Barbarian. Class cards define your character's adventuring profession. Each class has its own unique attribute goals. These define the desired score for each attribute and show how many reputation stars, which are the points in the game, the player will receive at the end of the game for reaching each attribution goal. Each class also has its own unique class ability that can be used throughout the course of the game. And lastly, there's the class title and color. For this how to play, I'll go ahead and use the warrior class. Just a note, once a class has been chosen, any player drawing the same colored die will have to replace the die and draw again. You'll then shuffle the deck of backstory cards and the deck of alignment cards. Deal one backstory card to each player. Backstory cards describe what your character did before they decided to head out on their own and start adventuring. On each backstory card, you'll find the attribute grid. This shows the 18 possible spaces across the six attribute rows. Six spaces in the grid, one for each attribute, will show a die of a specific color. The Reputation Star Rewards section shows players how they can earn reputation at the end of the game for matching the dice colors in the attribute rows of your character sheet to the dice colors and positions shown on your backstory card. The numbers shown below the stars show how many matching colors you need in order to earn the number of reputation stars shown inside the star. And then we have the backstory title and a little backstory description. Each player is then dealt one alignment card. These track your character's shifting moral perspectives. On your card, you'll find the alignment title, your alignment starting position, and the alignment grid. This shows the nine possible positions of the tracking token and the effect on your reputation as your character leans towards good or evil, 
and towards lawful and chaotic. At the end of the game, you'll gain or lose reputation stars based on the position of the tracking token on the alignment card. Each player is also given a player aid. On one side, you'll find the play sequence that you'll use throughout the game, and then at the end of the game, you'll flip it over in order to keep track of scoring. Each player places their backstory and alignment cards on their character sheet, their player aid off to the side, and then takes two tracking cubes matching their class color, placing one on the center space of their alignment card and the other on their class card. With character setup now complete, we can move on to setting up the market. In the market, you'll have the opportunity to purchase cards that will enhance your character and help you score more reputation stars. There are four types of market cards, weapons, armor, traits, or skills. Although there are four types of cards, they generally follow the same layout. First, we have the cost. This is the amount of gold you will need to spend in order to purchase the card. This is the setup group. This is used to configure the market deck during setup. You'll see what I mean in just a second. And finally, we have the card title, description, and flavor text. To set up the market deck, separate the cards into single dot and double dot card piles. If you're playing with four players, leave the deck as is. However, if you're playing with three players, discard three cards from each pile. And if you're playing with two players, discard seven cards from each pile. Since I'll be showing you a two player game, I'll go ahead and discard seven cards from each deck. Shuffle the pile separately and place the single dot pile on top of the double dot pile to form the market deck. To create the market, draw a number of cards equal to the number of players plus one. Place these cards face up in the center of the table. Line up the initiative cards in the center of the table in numerical order. The number of initiative cards should be the same as the number of market cards. Place one gold on each initiative card that is neither first nor last in numerical order. In our two player game, that would only be on the number two. Beginning with the start player, each player randomly draws their starting dice from the bag. The number of dice drawn by each player is equal to the number of players plus four. In the case of our two player game, we'll each draw six. Each player will now roll their starting dice and arrange them on their character sheet in the spaces of their attribute rows. When doing so, players must follow these guidelines. For each gold die that you draw, you immediately gain two gold. The only exception to this is the player with the thief class who takes four gold for each gold die drawn instead of two. When placing dice, they must always be placed in the leftmost empty space in the attribute row. For each row that you fill with three dice now, and for the remainder of the game, you gain one gold. And lastly, attribute actions cannot be taken this step. More on attribute actions in just a little bit. The start player can now begin the game. In role player, players will be rolling and drafting dice to their character sheets one at a time, slowly working them up in order to meet various goals as determined by their background card, their alignment card, and their class card in order to gain reputation stars. There are also several other ways to gain reputation stars throughout the game, but we'll talk about that as we go through the video. At the end of the game, the player with the most reputation stars is declared the winner. Role player is played over a series of rounds. Each round is divided into four phases. The roll phase, dice phase, market phase, and finally the cleanup phase. Starting with the roll phase, the start player draws dice from the bag equal to the number of initiative cards in play and rolls them to create the dice pool. Then, place the lowest value die on initiative card 1, the second lowest on initiative card 2, and so on, until all the dice have been placed. If you run into a problem where you have multiple dice of the same value, then it's up to the start player to decide in what order they would like to place the dice on the initiative cards. I think I'll place the red 5 here on initiative card 2, and the purple 5 on initiative card 3. In the dice phase, beginning with the start player and continuing clockwise, players take turns selecting an initiative card, placing the die from that initiative card on their character sheet, collecting gold when applicable, and taking an attribute action. As the start player, I'll go ahead and select this card here and place it above my character sheet for a moment. Player 2 will take this one. Each player will then take their die from their initiative card and place it in the leftmost empty space of one of their attribute rows. I'll go ahead and place this red 5 here in dexterity 
because based on my lost soul background, I require a red die in that position to score reputation at the end of the game. Player 2 will place their purple 5 in constitution because she requires a 17 in constitution and a 5 would go a long way to help that. Players can now collect gold from the following. Gold from their initiative cards, if any. One gold from the supply if a player placed their third die in the final space of an attribute. And two gold from the supply if the player placed a gold die. Still in the dice phase, players may now take an attribute action. These are optional actions and do not have to be taken. After placing a die in an attribute row, the player may take the attribute action associated with that row. Placing a die in strength allows the player to change the value of any one die on their character sheet for the value opposite of it. Dexterity allows a player to swap the placement of any two dice. However, their values stay the same. Constitution allows a player to increase or decrease the value of any one die on their character sheet by one. However, a six cannot become a one and a one cannot become a six. Placing a die in Intelligence allows a player to select any one die from their character sheet to re-roll it. After the die is re-rolled, the player may choose to keep the new value or switch back to the original value. Whatever the choice, the player must now place the die in its original space on the character sheet. Wisdom allows players to change their alignment by moving the tracking token on the alignment card one space up, down, left, or right. And lastly, Charisma allows players to take one of these handy Charisma tokens that can be used in the market phase to decrease the cost of an item by one gold. However, if you do not use the token on the next market phase, it will be discarded in the cleanup phase. Once all players have completed their turn during the dice phase, you'll then move on to the market phase. During the market phase, players will have the chance to purchase a card from the market. The order for this is determined by the initiative cards that the players gained in the dice phase. Starting with the player that has the lowest valued initiative card followed by the next lowest and so on, you can now take turns purchasing cards. To purchase a market card, players must pay the cost shown in the upper right hand corner of the card to the supply. The player will then take their newly purchased card and place it face up in the appropriate space around their character sheet. Just a few things about the market cards before we carry on to the cleanup phase. As we discussed in the setup, there are four types of cards. First, we have armor cards. These cards give you reputation stars based on the number of cards from the same set you have equipped. More cards of the same set, the more stars you get at the end of the game. In addition, you get plus one reputation stars if it is worn by the right class as indicated by the color requirements. Trade cards provide a player with even more ways to earn reputation stars. Nimble, for instance, gives you one star at the end of the game just for having the card. Honest earns you three stars for each column on your character sheet with four or more dice of the same color. What's common to all trade cards is this little arrow next to its price. When purchased from the market, the player that purchased the card must move the tracking token on their alignment card one space in the direction indicated on the card if they're able to. Skills provide players with, well, with skills. Players may use skills in the same turn that they're purchased. To use a skill, a player moves the tracking token on the player's alignment card in the direction indicated by the arrow on the card. Then, if the player chooses, they can use the skill. Lastly, the player exhausts the skill they just use by turning it sideways. If their player is unable to move their tracking token due to its position on the alignment card, then the skill cannot be used. Skill cards can be used at any time, unless the description of the card says otherwise, and each player may refresh only one skill per round and this only happens during the cleanup phase. Before we move on to weapon cards, just know that there is no limit to the number of armor, trait, or skill cards that a player can have. That, unfortunately, is not the case for weapons. Weapons give players an ongoing ability or bonus. Each weapon features an icon showing one or two hands. This indicates to the players the number of hands required for the weapon. So a player may have two one-handed weapons or one two-handed weapon. If a player does not want or cannot afford a card in the market phase, they can instead choose to discard any one card from the market. When they do, they gain two gold from the supply. 
After a player has either purchased or discarded a card from the market, they then return their initiative card to the proper location on the table, and then the player who now has the lowest initiative takes their turn and so on, until everyone has had a chance to buy or discard a card. During the cleanup phase, the players prepare for the next round by carrying out the following. Each player discards any unused charisma tokens. Each player may refresh one exhausted skill. The start player returns the unchosen die from the dice phase to the bag and discards the remaining market card. They'll then draw a new set of market cards for the next round, place one gold on any initiative cards that do not have one but require one as per the setup, and finally the start player passes the dice bag to the left and they become the start player for the next round. The game ends at the end of the round in which all the players have filled every attribute row on their character sheets. Players then move on to final scoring. I'll only be running through the final scoring for the first player, so let's just see what we've got. First thing we will score is our attribute goals. If we take a look here at our warrior class card that we got at the beginning of the game, you can see the attribute requirements. 18 for strength, 16 or 17 for dexterity, and so on. There are three kinds of numbers you'll see for your attribute goals. Exact numbers, ranges, and goals that include a plus sign. As you can see, our strength and constitution are exact numbers. That means that after we total the value of dice in the strength attribute row and add any modifiers to the number from racial bonuses or penalties as well as weapon cards, then the total value needs to be exactly 18 in the case for strength and 17 for constitution. So if you go to our character sheet, you can see that we have a 6, a 5, and a 5 for a total of 16. Add to that our plus 2 strength for playing an orc, then we get to a total of 18. For meeting that goal, we get 4 stars, which is a good start. Unfortunately, we weren't so lucky with constitution and only got a 15 when we needed a 17, so no points there. Our dexterity is a range. That just means that as long as your attribute row totals a number in that range, you get the reputation stars. In the case of dexterity, we need 16 or 17. Luckily, we've got a total of 16 here, so we get those two stars. As for goals that have a plus sign, that just indicates to the player that it has to be equal to or higher than that number. For our intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, we just need a 14 or higher. Now, I certainly don't meet the requirements with my intelligence of 9, but that's okay, we'll come back to that shortly. Wisdom, we've got it exactly with 15, but we could have scored it if it were higher than that. And for Charisma, we've got a 13, missing the threshold to score that star by just one. Next, we'll score our class color dice. All that is required for that is to count the number of dice on your character sheet that match your class color, in which case you earn one star for each. Now over to your alignment card, this one is pretty easy. You score points based on where your tracking token is at the end of the game. If we take a look here, you can see that I managed to make my way throughout the game into the top right corner, and that scores me three points. However, there was a chance that I would score zero or minus one star. Over here for the backstory card, we score points based on having the right color die in the right position on our character sheet. If you have two or three matching, you score one point. For four or five matches, you score three points, and for six matches, you score six points. We've matched here, 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 and here for a total of four matches, which earns us three stars. Let's now take a look at scoring armor cards. Like I mentioned before, these cards give you reputation stars based on the number of cards from the same set you have equipped, plus an additional star if it's worn by the right class. Here you can see on the chain set that if you have one piece equipped, you score one star. For two pieces, two stars, all the way up to possibly having five pieces. In this case, we have three pieces from the set. However, we also have this tower shield that counts as an additional armor piece for one incomplete set. So that means we actually count it as having four pieces of the set, which will score us seven points. And we earn one more star for the set if it's worn by the red or white classes. We are the red class, so chalk up one more point. And last but not least, we have trait cards. Remember how I said we would come back to our intelligence score? Well, this is why. 
At the moment, I have a total score of 9 for intelligence. Apparently, because orcs aren't very intelligent, we get a minus 2 to that score, making it a 7. If we take a look at this Reckless card, we earn 2 stars for each of our attribute scores that is 5 or less. Our intelligence is the only score that's even close to that. So what I'm going to do is use this Courageous card that I haven't used yet. It states, when scoring attribute goals, I get a plus 2 or minus 2 value to any single score. I think I'll drop that minus 2 on my intelligence, bringing it to a whopping 5, which means I meet the condition for Reckless, earning me my final 2 stars. After you tally everything up, the player with the most reputation stars wins. If there's a tie, then the player with the most gold wins. If there's still a tie, then the player who has the fewest number of class color dice on their sheet wins. And after all of that, if there is still a tie, well, it just wasn't meant to be, and the tied players share the victory. And there you have it. That is how you play Role Player. Be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching, and happy gaming.